What's going on everyone? Welcome to a brand new episode of Show Me The Crypto. On this episode, we chat live on location here at the Blockchain Futurist Conference with Mark Greenberg, who is the Managing Director for Canada with Kraken. Alf, what were your thoughts on this episode? Oh, it was a great chance to talk to someone who's really knowledgeable about the Canadian crypto regulation scene as that's something that Kraken has to regularly deal with. So we got into everything with Mark on that side of the business, on what that looks like and just how it might evolve in regards to getting things more regulated in a more black and white manner because it's often said that it's such a gray area and that it's not well defined. But Mark's take was that in Canada, it actually is somewhat well defined and it's a lot better than it is in America. So to really dive in and understand that all was fascinating for me. Yeah, well said, Alf. And he also talked a little bit about Kraken here in Canada, the largest exchange. We get into all sorts of topics. You're going to love this episode. Show me the crypto. <laughs> Show me the crypto. <laughs> Show me the crypto. In a world on the brink of disruption, two men will bring you clarity by interviewing some of the most intelligent and influential names in the blockchain world. Welcome to Show Me The Crypto with your hosts, Wade Patterson and Ulf Lonegren. Well, hey everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Show Me The Crypto, live on location at the Blockchain Futurist Conference. And we're here with Mark Greenberg, who's the Managing Director for Kraken here in Canada. Mark, welcome to Show Me The Crypto. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, we're stoked to sit down and talk to you. And the first question I want to ask, we're on day two of the conference. How's the conference been so far for you? Oh, it's just been tons and tons of fun. It's a chance to catch up with old friends and colleagues across the industry. It's a chance to uh, make new connections here. And it's our first time sponsoring and just having a bigger presence. So it's just been tons and tons of fun. We want to know a bit about your history. Like, when did you first discover crypto? What was your initial impressions? And ultimately, you know, how did you get to a place where you're, you know, you're in this position with Kraken, a leading brand in the crypto space? <laughs> Yeah, that's a great question. And I'll be honest, I was a crypto skeptic at first. It took me a while to, um, to, uh, to find use cases that got me really excited. And uh, there's a lot of them through my history. I used to build startups for banks, but in my last role, I spent a bunch of time uh, building an engineering hub in Colombia for one of the big banks. And it was a ton of fun. We built it to a thousand people, but at the same time, the currency was dropping. And it was just unbelievable how much that affected people's lives and how out of control they were in it. So we were desperately trying to pay salary increases. People were leaving the country, even though they loved Colombia and they wanted to, they ended up moving to Chile or other markets just because they were worried they would lose all their life savings. And uh, it just, continued to reinforce for me the importance of uh, having global currencies that aren't reliant on individual governments. And uh, I, it was the straw that broke the uh, camel's back in that case in that it just, um, I couldn't find a way inside of banks to make any of those things happen. And we tried very hard on the crypto side and it just, uh, it led me to, um, to start seeking out ways I could get more involved and more engaged and help uh, support the industry. One of the things we were chatting about before we hit the record button was a little bit about Kraken's presence here in Canada. And it is, correct me if I'm wrong, the largest exchange in Canada. Can you kind of talk about the scope, like how many employees there are within Kraken and that type of thing here in Canada? Yeah, for sure. We're super proud of our presence in Canada. We have uh, just about 275 employees, Krakenites here in Canada. We have uh, five Canadian dollar spot market pairs. We're actually the only uh, crypto company with Canadian dollar spot market pairs. We have 175 to uh, tokens listed on the exchange. And uh, uh, we don't have all the data on volume and other things, but we're pretty sure we have the highest volume on our exchange uh, uh, for Canadians. And so uh, really proud of the history of Kraken in Canada too. We've been in Canada since 2011. And, uh, I think that makes us the oldest exchange in Canada at this point. So just super proud of Canada and it's part of why we, uh, we continue to deepen our investment here over time. One of the ongoing topics that people have been discussing for seems like a while now is regulation. 
uh, regulation in America, but also regulation in Canada. And you were just on a panel, blockchain regulation in Canada. For those who missed the panel, can you kind of explain, you know, what was that all about? Maybe what were some of the questions and answers that took place? And yeah, if you could dive into that a little bit, it'd be great. Yeah, so um, let me start by saying, I I think we have maybe the clearest regulatory pathway for crypto of any country in the world. And that's pretty cool in Canada. Now, that lead is disappearing as Mika and other things go in place in other countries. But uh, the more the regulator's been relatively collaborative, they want very similar things to what we want. Consumer protection, safety, uh, you know, a reduction in fraud. Those are things that Kraken has always stood for and is really important to us as well. And so at the end of the day, um, while there are a few things we would love to change, there are a few things that are annoying to implement, at the end of the day, I do feel like we have a pretty straight, a, a, uh, a clear path that allows us to continue to invest. And so uh, that's you know, why I'm in my role uh, for the past year. That's why we continue to sponsor events like this. That's why we continue to grow our business here in Canada. Um, I am less focused and spend a lot of time in the panel trying to move away from the short-term quirks of securities law towards some of the bigger picture things. First, we have, uh, if crypto is going to replace fiat currency, I need to be able to use it to buy a drink over there and uh, not fill a tax form every single time I do that. We have to think about capital gains exemptions for crypto for small purchases. That's really important. Uh, and while I hope and expect crypto to replace fiat over time, at this point we still need access to banking in Canada. There are five big banks in Canada, uh, none of them are taking, uh, uh, all of them are somewhat hostile to crypto and we need to make sure that, that uh, we need to break through that and we need that to go away um, so that more folks can turn fiat into crypto and vice versa as they need to. Uh, those are the regulatory topics that I'm thinking most about. Um, there are other topics that were brought up in the panel, like stable coins and others. I think we'll find solves to those things, and those are a little bit more tactical in the short run. But if we're going to, uh, if crypto is going to become the default for everyone, we need to solve some of those bigger issues. So considering, as you mentioned there, that Canada is kind of leading the way or has the clearest pathway to regulation, are other countries following in our footsteps, or what does it look like kind of on the global scale? Yeah, so um, I won't pretend to be an expert in the crypto regulatory regime in every country. And uh, they're all different, which is a headache in and of itself. And they're all at different stages. But I do think um, my colleagues in other markets are for sure spending more time learning about what we're doing in Canada, taking lessons, both the good and the bad, from what we've done here. And I definitely and vice versa. We're also learning from some of the regulatory regimes being put in the place in the UK and in the EU and in Australia and other markets. At the end of the day, though, uh, our rules are the furthest along. They're the clearest. They allow us to invest significantly. And, um, and we have a regulator that wants to learn about crypto and wants to make it work. So, uh, uh, and uh, maybe the biggest piece will just be how do we get to some commonality around the world over time. It is, as a global exchange, um, more and more different rules in different countries with different things just make it harder for us to operate our business efficiently. And my knowledge is limited on this, but my understanding is the CSA um, made some changes in the last year that ultimately pushed out a number of exchanges uh, from operating in Canada, Kraken not being one of them. Why, like, why did that push some out, Kraken stayed, and how do you think that affects um, centralized exchanges operating in Canada in the future? Yeah, um, I won't pretend to speak for the other exchanges, and I don't have any insider knowledge to why they decided to, uh, to leave. But, as I said before, Kraken's work, we had a default position at the beginning of all of that, which is we wanted to stay and we were very keen to stay. And for all the reasons I said earlier, we're deeply committed to Canada. I think there were some smaller players that 
decided they didn't have the scale to meet the scale of a company like Kraken to meet the compliance requirements, they do take time, energy, people, engineering build to deliver on those pieces. And then uh, there are others that um, made their own choices for reasons that I, I, I can't begin to, uh, to answer. At the end of the day, Canada is a big market. It's an important market for crypto. If you want to keep pushing crypto adoption, you need to be in Canada. And, uh, and we're happy to, um, to keep investing here. So. It seems like all the time there's craziness happening in the crypto industry. But if we think about in the last 12 months, especially late last year, there was madness, everything of the, from the FTX fallout, and I think people losing trust in centralized exchanges. I don't know how much you can speak to this, but from a Kraken perspective, did that impact you and how did you focus on reputation during that time? I feel very proud of Kraken's long-standing reputation as being safe, secure, and customer-focused with great you know, tight spreads and great liquidity. Um, and that's always been important to me. It's always been important in crypto, but I don't know if everybody valued it as much as we did. And that has changed. There's been a full 180 on that at this point. I think people value the, our longstanding history, our focus on security and compliance, and just, um, and that has meant that we, well, all crypto centralized exchanges have had to weather the storm to some extent. Uh, Kraken, I think, comes out of that storm much stronger uh, on our, yeah, on our journey. And, and I think that just is the, the simplest answer to it. Uh, I don't think, you always hear this like, you know, centralized exchange, decentralized exchange as a either or. I think there are uses for both. I think the more options people have, the more um, they will have the choice to do the things that work for them. And, uh, and Kraken's going to be a big part of that. So. And I think just further to that question, but maybe from the other angle of, you know, the crypto investors and the people looking to utilize exchanges, does everything that happened in the last year do you think ultimately it has a sour taste in people's mouths using centralized exchanges where they feel that hey, these, these are supposed to be the ones uh, like, like the tools and the, the businesses and the brands they can trust, but that kind of all got screwed and now they're looking at potentially like decentralized exchanges where they're trustless. Or do you think there's you know a mix for both? Yeah, how, how does that play out in the future? I think you'll always have different types of entities that want to do different things, right? We have many folks on the Kraken Exchange who bring tokens in, make their trades, take things out, and, and hold their own keys. And uh, for me, that's the way to do it. If you can do that, you should do it. Um, but not everybody wants to do that. Not everybody has the expertise or even wants to have the expertise to do that. And as your especially as you're bringing things like fiat into the system, it's sometimes harder to do that. And so I don't, I, for sure, a few bad actors have made this whole industry by association sometimes look bad. Um, and I think it's important for all of us to keep calling out those types of organizations, to keep finding them earlier, to not let them uh, sour the good name of crypto. <laughs> I think that's that's the end goal. Uh, will centralized exchanges always have a part in the ecosystem? I believe so. Uh, you know, and everybody will have a different opinion on how important it is to them on on it. But especially beginners, we're going to have a lot of beginners. In, if we're going to continue to grow the ecosystem, there's going to be a lot of beginners in it, and the easier, simpler pathways into the crypto ecosystem helps everybody, whether you're a centralized or sage, decentralized or otherwise. Well said. Mark, this has been a great conversation. We have three questions that we ask every guest on Show Me The Crypto, <laughs> so we're going to get to those in a second. Okay. One thing I want to ask you is, um, you know, there, there's these bull markets and bear markets in the crypto space. It could be argued we're currently in a bear market. 
if things go on the upswing in the future, what do you think will be a trend that dominates a future bull market? So if we think about kind of, you know, maybe NFTs and DeFi were a focus a few years ago, yeah. what do you see as being a future trend to keep an eye on? I continue to see use cases I'm excited about. I continue to see us focus on things like, like crypto payments and remittances and and uh, I think those will become a bigger part of the crypto ecosystem over time. And then just another reason for new people to enter the space and continue to buy into crypto. And I'm excited about those elements. Maybe that's my fintech background talking to some extent for sure. But I think there's just, uh, there's so much to be gained from those pieces. And I do think that's a trend we'll continue to see growing. Perfect. Well, as I mentioned, three questions we ask every guest. It's a little segment we call You Had Me at Crypto. I'll just gonna ask you. Okay. So the first question, who's your favorite person to follow in the crypto space? So I'm going to give a fintech answer because that's the kind of nerd <laughs> that I am. Uh, Simon Taylor, who runs uh, Fintech Brain Food, is a really interesting newsletter that comes out weekly and has existed for a long time. The reason it's exciting for me is that crypto is a piece of it, but not all of it. And my goal is to, I would be the happiest if all five of our big banks didn't exist anymore and, uh, and we could totally replace them with crypto. But to do that, you have to understand where they're going as well. So for me, that's a really important part. Nice. This one, just for fun, we're going 10 years out. Total, uh, you know, dart at the wall. But what will the price of Bitcoin be 10 years from today? <laughs> I'm not allowed even <laughs> to, to make price predictions on Bitcoin. All I'll say is, we're so focused. Adoption up, price up. That's kind of the general perspective. <laughs> right, I would right. see it, and that's as far as I can go well, in answering your question. Like that, like <laughs> and what is, third question, what is the most underrated project in all of crypto right now? So I'm going to give a Kraken answer because uh, I'm a little biased, but uh, Kraken NFT, our NFT platform, no gas fees, really, really cool opportunity. At this point, uh, contest on going right now where you can have your NFT put on the back of an F1 race car. Cool stuff, and uh, I think it's a big part of the future. So really excited for that product from Kraken. Mark, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Show Me the Crypto. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Thank you for listening to Show Me the Crypto. Please make sure to subscribe as well as rate and review this podcast.